Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a one sample proportion z-test using Microsoft Excel. I'm using Excel 2019 to be exact. Um, you should use this as an approximation to a binomial distribution. So only if your sample size is large enough this should be something to be uh, considered. I have a separate video on performing the exact binomial test. My data is stored in column A. Uh, it's coded with a 1 and a 2, which represented female and male, and a 99 would represent a no response. My expected proportion for the uh, female category would be 0 0.5, 50-50. Uh, this is simply 1 minus the other one, and the total should therefore always sum up to 1. Now the first thing I actually need to do is uh, get the counts. So how often was category 1 chosen? I can use count if for that. Uh, it counts in the range A. I'm using a semicolon to separate parameters. Your system perhaps uses a comma. And then the category 1 is the one I want it to count. I can simply copy paste this down for the second category and I can use the shortcut ALT equals to get the sum. So there were 12 females, 34 males and 46 in total. That answered this question. Now the next thing is, these are simply referring to what's over there. And then the first thing I need is this calculation over here, which is the sample size multiplied by the expected proportion. Then I need the sigma, which is the square root out of my just calculated mu multiplied by 1 minus and then the expected proportion again close all the parentheses and that's 3.39. The z-score is then simply my found x-value, the 12 minus the expected uh, minus mu, sorry, and then divide by that sigma. And that should give me minus 3.24. I can then use the newer norm as dist function. So this is a z-score which follows a normal distribution and I could use either that norm uh, as dist or I can use the norm as uh, dist, the old one without the dots. It wants a z value, so I could just plug this one in. Uh, it's already negative, but what I actually want is perhaps in some cases if I would have used the 34 instead of the 12, it would have been positive. And I always want here the negative one. So what I do is I take the negative out of the absolute value. That way, I know for sure an absolute value just removes a negative sign if it's there. So this will actually remove always the negative sign and then this minus in front of it, make sure that it's always there. Uh, that will calculate for me the cumulative uh, distribution or the cumulative density. So that means basically um, the area underneath the curve of the normal distribution from that z value from minus infinity up to minus 3.24. Now I want a two-sided test, so I simply multiply this by two to also get the other end of the tail, and we get a probability significance of 0 0.0018. So this means that the chances of finding a Z value as we have in our sample, or even more extreme, if indeed in the population this would be 0.5, is 0.00118, which is below the usual threshold of 0.05, and therefore this assumption is probably not true. So we saw already that we have quite more males than females, so also in the population I'll probably have more males than females. Now I could use a Yate continuity correction because this is actually using the normal distribution which is a continuous distribution while the binomial is a um, discrete one. So there's something known as a Yate co continuity correction which simply states to uh, recalculate that Z value but now take the absolute value and subtract a half. So I'm going to say again my absolute function I'll take the x, which was 12, minus the mu, and then I'll say to subtract 0 0.5, close the parentheses, I'll scroll down so you can actually see what I'm typing, divided by, and then still my sigma, which is over here, 
and that should give me my Z value with the Yates continuity correction. I can then actually just use this same formula as before. Um, I can use the equals the norm dist. I could actually use this one now. Uh, the Z value is again minus the absolute value of this one and then uh, say that cumulative is true I want it cumulative and then multiply by 2 so that's the same result oh, this one doesn't seem to be correct let me adjust it so when I upload this file you can actually see that formula as well all right, um, the wall test is slightly different. This so far is actually a so-called score test, sometimes referred to as. Um, the wall test is slightly different. Um, if we go back here, here we're using the proportion from the uh, expected proportion, the hypothesized according to the null hypothesis, if you will. The wall test says, no, we use here the um, proportion that we found in the sample. So that's the difference. Um, that means we need to recalculate something, our sigma SS, which is now going to be the square root of our X, which was this 12 multiplied by one minus. So this is what it looks like so far, one minus, and then that same uh, X, divided over my total sample size which was 46 over here so this is what that formula looks like then close all the parentheses so this gives a slightly different standard deviation or standard error and I use now the exact same formula as before I can say well it's going to be the X uh, which was 12 uh, where is it all the way up here minus my mu but now divided by this Z value according to Walt, uh, this uh, S value. So the significance can be calculated in exactly the same way as before, so I can probably even copy paste this whole function. And indeed, it seems to be picking up this Z value now. And there it is, it's a 0 0.0022. Of course, we could even also apply a Yates continuity correction to this one. So in that case, we actually use the similar as before. We say equals open up a set of parentheses. We take the absolute value of our x minus mu. So all the way up, x minus mu. And then we subtract a 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 close the parentheses for the numerator and divide by that S value and of course we can calculate its significance there as well so those are quite a few different variations I made a user-defined function for uh, all of them where you can choose which setting you want um, I'll upload this Excel file in the description uh, and leave a link to the in the description below but yeah this is how you can perform the one sample proportion test using a normal approximation rather than the exact binomial version. It is also possible to actually use a chi-square goodness of fit test instead of the exact binomial. Um, so if you're interested in those, you can have a look at my videos on how to perform a chi-square test of goodness of fit. But I think this is enough for uh, this video. Okay, I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.